Hello and welcome to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written in Indianapolis by Dr. Adrian Peterson and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on WaveScan, Chicago on Shortwave, the 10-year story of the shortwave station W9XF. Australian States on Shortwave, Part 5, South Australia, and our Bangladesh DX Report. The city of Chicago, located on the western edge of the Great Lakes, is one of the oldest cities in the United States, and also one of the largest. Its earliest history can be traced back to the first settler, Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, who came in from New Orleans and established a fur trading post on the north bank of the Chicago River at the edge of Lake Michigan. That was back in the 1770s. Greater Chicagoland, that is the city of Chicago, together with all of its widespread suburban areas, extends almost 50 miles inland from the lake and northwards up into Wisconsin and in the southeast down into Indiana. Greater Chicago is the third largest city in the United States, with a total population around 10 million. The city was named after the original Indian word for the Chicago River, Chicago. This name, with its French spelling, appears to honor the wild garlic plant that used to grow in the area. Interestingly, during the year 1900, engineers reversed the flow of the Chicago River so that the lake would not be contaminated by inflowing water. The city of Chicago is famous for its rebirth after the tragic fire in 1871 that destroyed much of the city, and for the grandeur of its tall towers that almost seemed to rival New York City. Another claim to fame is the Chicago Post Office, the world's largest post office building, through which a main highway runs, the Eisenhower Expressway. Not so well known is the fact that Chicago featured prominently in the early days of shortwave broadcasting, back in the era before World War II. The total number of shortwave stations on the air, at one time or another, in Chicagoland, would probably be in excess of 50, though most of these stations were in use for communication purposes, experimental TV, or the old Apex system of program broadcasting. However, sufficient evidence exists for us to presume that a dozen or so of these shortwave stations were actually on the air during the pre-war years with the broadcast of radio programming, music, and speech. Back there in that era, just two of the Chicago shortwave broadcasting stations stand out prominently, and these were identified as W9XAA, in association with medium wave WCFL, and the NBC station W9XF. On this occasion, we choose the story of the NBC shortwave station, W9XF, together with its association with medium-wave NBC stations in Chicago during that era. It was back on June 1st, 1927, that Samuel Insull, owner of the Great Lakes Broadcasting Company, bought the highly popular medium-wave station WENR from E.N. Rowland, owner of the All-American Radio Corporation, both in Chicago. This sale was finalized on April 17, 1928, with the transfer of $1.5 million. However, even before the finalization of the sale, Great Lakes Broadcasting applied to the Department of Commerce for a license to operate a special land station on 1040 kilohertz under the call sign 9XF. Planning also began quite quickly for a complete new broadcasting station at an outer suburban location in Downers Grove, a facility that would include offices, studios, and several transmitters. This brand-new radio station came into service just before mid-year 1929, and at the same time, the Department of Commerce approved an extension of the 9XF license to include three shortwave channels, 6020 kHz, 11800 kHz, and 21500 kHz, all of which fell into what later became the standard international shortwave bands. Known transmitters at this new location at this time were a 50-kilowatt AM medium-wave unit, 
for WENR, and a 5 kilowatt shortwave unit for W9XF. It is probable that the same shortwave transmitter was also in use for experimental mechanical television, under the call sign W9XR. The first known logging of the new shortwave W9XF was noted in Australia in August of the following year, 1930, on 6120 kHz, with a program relay from medium wave WENR. At this stage, WENR was also operating its on-air studios in the electrical generating plant of Commonwealth Edison at 72 West Adams Street near downtown Chicago. However, a few months later, Great Lakes Broadcasting sold their radio and TV facilities, including the Downers Grove Station, to the rather new national broadcasting company, NBC, in New York. When NBC took over, they stated that the shortwave broadcasts from W9XF would continue with programming from the Blue Network, though they did close the mechanical TV service from W9XR. Studios for the new NBC in Chicago were installed in the Merchandise Mart, which boasted as being the world's largest building at the time. Programming produced in this building was broadcast over several different transmitters, including WENR, WMAQ, and W9XF. Interestingly, an additional call sign was taken into usage for W9XF in 1933. This was W9XQ. Both call signs were in use on the same channel, 6100 kHz, at the same power level, 5 kilowatts, and it could be presumed that a second shortwave transmitter had been installed. It is suggested that the power level of the second transmitter, or perhaps the two transmitters combined, was raised to 10 kilowatts during the following year, and that this unit became the main transmitter for W9XF, with programming from WENR, NBC Blue Network. At this stage, an additional shortwave service was commenced from Downers Grove on 6425 kHz under the call sign W9XBS with programming from medium wave station WMAQ, the NBC Red Network. This shortwave service from W9XBS was on the air for a couple of years, though the call sign was later taken into use for an Apex broadcast service in 1939. In 1937, NBC lodged a request with the FCC for approval to install a 50-kilowatt shortwave transmitter, though this request was denied. We would presume that the reason for this dismissal was the fact that NBC was already involved with a large shortwave station located at Bound Brook, New Jersey. The programming from WENR, WMAQ, over the shortwave outlet W9XF, was on the air for a period of time approaching 10 years. It was heard throughout the United States, as well as in Europe, South America, and the South Pacific. It is known that the programming from shortwave station W9XF was occasionally rebroadcast live by radio stations in New Zealand and Australia. For example... In April 1932, the American radio magazine Broadcast News stated that the NZBS, New Zealand Broadcasting Service, has had remarkably good results in rebroadcasting signals from this station. This was at a time when the input power of the transmitter was rated at just 5 kilowatts, thus providing, we would suggest, approximately 2.5 kilowatts into the antenna system. Radio transmitter W9XF was inaugurated in the Downers Grove station just before mid-year 1929. It began as a 5-kilowatt unit power input. Seemingly an additional transmitter rated at 10 kilowatts was installed in 1934, and the shortwave service was closed at the end of the year 1938 when the WENRWLS transmitters were recited to Tinley Park. The Downers Grove site was sold during World War II for wartime manufacturing, and the manufacturing facility was closed in 1990. All buildings on the 40-acre site were demolished to make way for suburban housing. There are no known QSL cards verifying the reception of W9XF under Great Lakes Broadcasting, though numerous QSL cards for W9XF were issued by NBC from about 1934 onwards, 
including the short-term usage of the subsidiary call sign W9XQ. Well, we mentioned a moment ago WLS, which is one of the major stations still on the air from Chicago on 890 kilohertz AM. And this is what it sounds like today. Now, the latest weather channel forecast on 89 WLS. A little clearing as we go through the afternoon today. We remain on the cool side, though, as we get up into the upper 40s to the mid 50s. Tonight, partly to mostly cloudy, low 41. We'll see a mix of sunny clouds tomorrow, get up to around 65 degrees, and then the rain moves. Still a little cool up in Chicago compared to what we have here in Miami at this time of year. That was WLS, which incidentally was originally owned by the Sears Roebuck Company. Thus, the call letters WLS, which stood for World's Largest Store. You're listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Send your comments and reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the United States. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the USA. Or you can email us at WaveScan at awr.org Our email once again wavescan at awr.org Next today we go to Australia. Every state in the Commonwealth of Australia has at some time or another been involved in shortwave broadcasting. And on this occasion we take a look at the shortwave story in South Australia. The call signs for the medium wave stations in this state, located at the central section of the continental south coast, begin with the number 5, indicating the 5th radio district, South Australia. It was back in the year 1928 that the new commercial station, as it was then, 5CL, applied for a shortwave license, similar to 3LO in Melbourne, for the purpose of broadcasting their medium wave service to outback areas throughout Australia. This request was denied. However, during the following year, 1929, Station 5CL fed some of its programming to Melbourne for broadcast on shortwave over the AWA facilities of medium wave 3LO. During the 1930s, after 5CL was taken over by the ABC and a new set of studios was constructed in Hindmarsh Square, Adelaide, There were several occasions when the programming from 5CL was relayed over the AWA shortwave stations VK2ME Sydney and VK3ME Melbourne. In more recent time, during the 1970s, both of the ABC stations in Adelaide were noted with programming on shortwave from Radio Australia. For example, in February 1975, 5 a.m. was heard with a relay on 17715 kHz for Northern Territory medium wave via a 100 kilowatt transmitter at Radio Australia Shepparton. Then, in April, 5 a.m. was heard again from Shepparton on 11810 kHz with a program relay specifically for the isolated medium wave station in the Northern Territory 8GO in Gove. Then, Two years later again, the other ABC station, 5CL, was heard with a similar relay to Darwin Medium Wave via a 10-kilowatt transmitter at Lyndhurst on 6115 kHz. Going back to earlier times once more, the well-known Adelaide commercial station, 5AD, organized its own DX radio club. and They were on the air generally on Sundays with special programming for shortwave listeners. Initially, these special programs were broadcast in 1934 over the suburban amateur station VK5WB, though soon afterwards, the radio club obtained their own shortwave license and they were on the air under the call sign 5DI. The shortwave broadcasts from 5DI were heard throughout Australia and New Zealand, and even distantly in the United States. The station also used the call of the kookaburra bird as part of its sign-on routine, as did several other shortwave stations in Australia back during that era. 
Perception reports to 5DI were verified with their own QSL card. The last known broadcast from special shortwave station 5DI was made in August 1939. We might also add that special programming from the parent station 5AD was relayed by Radio Australia beginning in late 1944. One of these broadcasts was Australia's Amateur Hour, the historic equivalent to the current popular programs on TV, Britain's Got Talent, and America's Got Talent. Back in the 1930s, there was another interesting shortwave station on the air in South Australia. This was located at the small, isolated settlement of Yunta on the edge of the desert. This station was allocated the call sign VHU9, and its main purpose was for outback communication, though it was on the air occasionally for the relay of broadcast programming and also news bulletins during World War II. During the year 1939, there was a winter expedition to the central desert areas, the Madigan Expedition, that traversed the isolated areas extending westward from Broken Hill. This expedition carried its own small radio transmitter, and the evening broadcasts were picked up by station VHU-9 and relayed to the ABC in Adelaide. During the year 1944, there were many local shortwave stations in use for communication purposes throughout South Australia, and these were located in state divisions known as local council districts. At this stage, two of these local shortwave stations were permitted to broadcast news bulletins for local listeners daily at 11 a.m., and these were VL5DG on 3605 kilohertz in Blythe, 60 miles north of the state capital, Adelaide, and VL5DA on 1775 kilohertz at a location that is now unknown. We can also add that many of the coastal radio stations in Australia were noted with the broadcast of weather reports and navigational warnings on shortwave back in their earlier years. This was true of station VIA, located initially near Port Adelaide and subsequently inland at McLaren Vale. Back in the year 1934, Maritime VIA installed a 5-kilowatt shortwave beam transmitter, and it appears that this was in use at times for the onward relay of radio programming for rebroadcast in other states and on shortwave for international listeners. From the very beginning, South Australia has had an interesting connection with the Inland Shortwave Service for the Northern Territory. Even though 5CL was denied its first application for a license for an Inland Shortwave Service in 1928, yet ten years later, initial plans were announced for establishing a Northern Territory Shortwave Service with programming from Adelaide. Again, nothing more happened at this stage. Then, in the early 1970s, three American shortwave transmitters were obtained for this purpose and they were placed in storage and modified at the large ABC complex at Pimpala, on the coast south of the city of Adelaide. However, before they were installed for the projected Northern Territory shortwave service, one of these units was diverted for installation at Carnarvon in Western Australia for Radio Australia. This Harris 100-kilowatt transmitter was activated at Carnarvon on February 15, 1976, under the line call sign VLL. Two other transmitters were taken over as replacement units for Radio Australia at Shepparton in Victoria. However, after the shortwave service was installed at three different locations in the Northern Territory, there were times when Adelaide provided the programming. For instance, in August 1986, the ABC in Adelaide was noted with the identification announcement ABC Radio in South Australia Broken Hill, and VL8T in the Northern Territory. It's 6 a.m. in Kuala Lumpur, 8 a.m. in Melbourne. You're listening to Radio Australia. This 
is Radio Australia News. I'm Emma Younger. The headlines. Chinese rescue teams arrive in remote earthquake-affected areas of Sichuan. Investigations into the Boston bombing... You're listening to Wavescan from Adventist World Radio. Now let's go to Salahuddin Dolar in Bangladesh with our DX News. Bangladesh with our test transmission using 13 new 10 kilowatt FM transmitters. Bangladesh Bezar has installed 13 new 10 kW FM transmitters at following cities and currently base transmission being carried on in Dhaka on 102.0, 104.0 and 106.0 MHz. Insulate on 88.8, Rangpur on 88.8, Kumilla on 103.6, Foxes Bazaar on 100.8, Kurla on 88.8, Joshor on 100.8, Ratshahi on 88.8, Sitagam on 88.8, and Borishal on 105.0 MHz. Now the receiving log of different radio stations we say monitored. May 1st, 0100 to 0130 UTC Radio Japan in Hindi on 11590 kHz, Desai Code was 333. 1940 to 1950 UTC, Radio Kuyat in English on 15540 kHz, Desai Code was 333. May 2nd, 2030 to 2045 UTC, Voice of Turkey in English on 7205 kHz, Desai Code was 333. 2105 to 2150 UTC, IRIB in Spanish on 9760 kHz, the SI code was 333. May 3rd, 1300 to 1320 UTC, Radio Japan in Bangla on 11685 kHz, the SI code was 444. 1320 to 1330 UTC, Radio Free Asia in Barbies on 9335 kHz, the SI code was 333. 1330 to 1350 UTC, Radio Saudi Arabia in Bangla on 15120 kHz, the SI code was 322. May 4th, 1345 to 1355 UTC, Radio Romania International in Russian on 15160 kHz, the SI code was 322. 1400 to 1425 UTC, Radio Thailand in English. On 9950 kHz, the SI code was 333. 1850 to 1858 UTC, Bible Voice Broadcasting in English on 15215 kHz, the SI code was 333. May the 5th, 1600 to 1610 UTC, Adventist World Radio in English, DX program wave scan on 15360 kHz, the SI code was 343. 1610 to 1620 UTC on 15670 kHz, the SI code was 433. 1620 to 1630 UTC, Bangladesh data in Arabic on 7250 kHz, the SI code was 322. 1630 to 1640 UTC, Radio Kuwait in Hindi on 15540 kHz, the SI code was 433. 1640 to 1650 UTC, Radio Taiwan International in English on 9440 kHz, the SI code was 444. May 6, 0030 to 0057 UTC, Radio Veritas Asia in Bangla on 15265 kHz, the SI code was 322. 1600 to 1630 UTC, KBS World Radio. In English, on 9515 kHz, the SI code was 343. May 7th, 1500 to 1510 UTC, BBC in Pashto, on 9810 kHz, the SI code was 444. 1510 to 1520 UTC, Bangladesh Betar in Hindi, on 15505 kHz, the SI code was 333. 1530 to 1540 UTC, Radio Japan in Japanese on 9750 kHz, the SI code was 333. May 8, 
We end with some interesting music today from Rabi Abu Khalil. He is originally from Lebanon and now lives in Germany and France. This is his song, Blue Camel. Thanks for listening to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written by Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis. Next week, radio broadcasting in the land of the mountain lion, part four, relay services and our Australian DX report from Bob Padula. If you'd like a QSL card for reports on this program, you can send them to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229-USA. You can write to us via email to wavescan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr.org. I'm Jeff White at Shortwave Station WRMI in Miami. Till next week, very good listening to you.